Hello, this is video 28, the last video before we start talking about friction. There are a few more additional problems in this video, and so let's get right to them. So the first one is your turn. So two boxes are suspended from a rope over a pulley. Each box is a weight of 50 Newton. What is the tension in the rope? So your initial thought might be, well, there are two strings or it's actually just one string, but you might think, oh, well, there's a string on both sides, so there's, I'm going to add up those tensions, there's going to be 100 newtons. But the key here is that the boxes have the same weight, so that means there's going to be as much pull on each side, so this is going to be an equilibrium. So when it's in the equilibrium, you can draw a free body diagram for one of these boxes here, there's going to be tension pointing away. There's going to be a, a weight going straight down. If it's in equilibrium, the forces must balance. That means that tension must be equal to that weight. So the tension over here must also be equal to that weight is also 50. Remember, one string, one tension. The tension throughout the rope is going to be 50 newtons. Let's look at the next one. A box is being pulled to the right at steady speed by a rope that angles upward. In this situation, how does the normal force compare to the weights? So it actually doesn't even matter that it's pulled at a steady speed here because we care only about the y forces in order to figure out the normal force. So if we draw a free body diagram, for this object, we have the normal force. And again, I'm not supposed to draw the surface. I just like to draw the surface. It helps me know exactly which way that normal force is going. We have the weights. And we have a diagonal force here, the tension. So in order to find the weights, well, conceptually, we should actually see that it's less than the weight because there are two forces that are pulling up and they must balance the force pulling down because this object is in equilibrium in the y direction. It's not jumping up and down, it's being pulled to the right. So if it's in equilibrium in the y direction, then we can see that the normal force is going to be less than the weight. But if we want to go ahead and write out Newton's second law here, when we're in equilibrium, then in the y direction we'll have the normal force, we'll have Ty, which is the y component of that tension, going up, and then we have minus the weight mg going down. And if we solve for the normal force, we see the normal force equals mg minus Ty. So that also shows us that the normal force is less than the weight. But you can always try to approach these conceptually and not have to write down equations, but I find it helpful to do both. Let's do one more your turn. The top block is accelerated across a frictionless table by the falling mass M. The string is massless, the pulley is both, both massless and frictionless. It only says this because later we'll deal with instances where the pulley is actually going to affect the motion. But for right now, we're going to pretend that this pulley does not affect the motion. It just makes the string uh, bend, but it does not slow down the motion or anything. So what's the tension in the string? So again, we can do this just thinking of it conceptually. And then I'll show you the equations as well. So first thing is that this object is going to accelerate downward. And you may think, oh, well, what if this box is really big? Then can't it just sit still? But if there's no friction, because we haven't talked about friction yet, then that means that there's no force opposing this pull. There's nothing going this way. So this box, doesn't matter how heavy it is, it's still going to accelerate to the right. Once we have friction, that will definitely be a different story. So with this in mind, if you look at this box that's accelerating here, and you think about the fact that it's accelerating downward, 
that means the net force is downward. That means the force downward must be bigger than the force upward in order for there to be a net force downward. So that means that the weight must be bigger than the tension in order for this thing to accelerate downward. Now, if you just couldn't figure that out without writing equations, and I'm like that too, I like to have the equations, well, let's write down Newton's second law for this hanging mass here. Sum of Fy equals MAY, or MA, there's only one acceleration. And by the way, this block would have the same acceleration as this one. And then let's go ahead and use the rotated coordinate system that we talked about in the apparent weight elevator problem, where I'm going to make anything in the direction of acceleration positive, anything opposite that direction negative. So when I look at the forces, I look at the ones in the same direction as the acceleration, and I say weight or mg, then minus t, because t is opposite, equals ma. And then I go ahead and solve for t. And if you, you'll see that it's going to end up being mg minus ma. So again, showing us that the tension is less than the weight. So that's actually all I have for this video, because I already made videos for these three problems a long time ago, and they're still good. So here are the links for you to look at them on YouTube. I really strongly urge you to look at these. These are very crucial problems. They're not just additional optional problems. They're, you're going to see these again. I just didn't want to make more videos of them since I already have them on YouTube. So in this one, you're going to have to find a normal force on the box. I think in the acceleration of the box, if I remember correctly. The second problem here, the traffic light, is your typical problem that you encounter in Physics 1 where you have to find the tension in each rope. And then the third one here is called the Atwood machine. And you can find the tension in the rope and also the acceleration of the masses there over this, this pulley here. So please take a look. There's nothing to recap here. We're just additional problems. And that's all for Newton's second law until we get to friction in the next video.